<sighs> gobble, gobble. We likes to hobble. We don't cause trouble. We don't bottle a bottle. I sound, I know I sound crazy. I found out that you can pretty much hear everything that I say really loudly or sing really loudly. You can hear that outside. My goodness, my neighbors are probably like, that's the crazy place right there because I am constantly and I, and just random, just random singing. I have nothing, just all the time. Hey, you came to visit me? Okay, we're gonna go outside soon. Just let me get through this delicious blueberry pie. They have to know about it. I've been on a pie kick, okay? I have been making my pie crust from scratch, my fillings, and taking them to these events that I've been doing these pop-up shops and I've been selling them and people are loving them. I just have to show you guys how I do it. <laughs> yes. Oh my, you're heavy. Okay. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you guys could see he's got me in a full blown wrist lock. Wow. Um mm, beautiful. <laughs> you smell lip gloss. Is that what it is? <laughs> Are you bored? <laughs> if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Press on the notification bell and let's get started for He Eats Me Alive. pies are one of the easiest pies to make really fruit pies in general are pretty easy you just put everything in a bowl so I have been draining my frozen blueberries all day long because like I said they were frozen so they released a lot of juice that is going to hopefully sop up with the flour and cornstarch I have about three cups of blueberries here I'm going to add in my granulated sugar I'm not going to do the whole thing because this is not a lot of blueberries so that's going to be, I'm going to do about half. Woo, when that sugar powder comes up. Then I'm going to add in some fresh lemon zest. You definitely need lemon zest. It helps to bring down the tone of that sweetness. Lemon and blueberry always goes beautifully together. Along with that, I'm going to add some fresh lemon juice from one half of a lemon. I always try to get a little bit of pulp in there because there is nothing like a nice burst of like pulp, lemon pulp. Now let's add in our dry ingredients besides the sugar. We're gonna do some cinnamon, which adds a little bit of nuttiness to this pie and earthiness. I have cinnamon, cornstarch, and all-purpose flour. I don't know if I'm gonna need all of this flour down here. So I'm just going to go by the look of it, but I'm going to add all the cornstarch, which is gonna give it that good consistency that we know and love. My goodness, let's do this. Bow, 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 bow. I mean to break it. Give this a stir and see what it's looking like. We don't want it to look dry. We don't want it to be too wet because these blueberries are going to explode as they bake and they're going to create a lot of juice. So let me add a little bit more of that flour in there. Okay, and I am going to leave this liquid behind in the bowl when I put it into my pie crust. Maybe. We'll see how I feel. We'll see how I feel. That's how baking is, right? You just kind of see how you feel sometimes. All right, you guys. So I have my pie crust that I made a couple days ago and had in the freezer. You want to make sure that it's cold. Just going to dust clean, clean, clean hands. And this is a nutmeg crust. I like my crust in pies to be not just your typical regular old crust. I like it to be special. I'm just going to roll this out. And I like a thicker crust, not super thick, good enough so that I could taste it. Every element is important. You want it to be delicious from the crust to the filling. So I'm gonna put this in my pie pan. Have my pie crust. 
Well, <laughs> if that was the crust, that's the problem. I had my pie pan. I'm gonna roll this up just like how I would do with fondant. Just gonna lay it right over. All right. Use your hands when you're cooking for yourself. Use gloves when you're cooking for others. So this is my pie, my pie. Okay, so we have a nice amount overlapping. And then I just wanna push all the crust together. That's kind of giving me issues. This is when I try to really channel my ancestors because I wanna have grandma fingers when I'm making a pie. I want this to be like, oh my goodness, I haven't had a pie this good since my grandmother made it. One thing that I didn't do in this video that I do now, after seeing the results of me making my pies, I do definitely poke the holes in the bottom of the crust using a fork, and then I pre-bake it for about 10 minutes and a 350 degree preheated oven. That way your pie crust is not gummy. Personally, I kinda like a gummy pie crust, that's weird. I like soft gummy foods sometimes, so it just, I just like it. I'm not a big crust fan, and I think that's why. It gives me a decadence, you know, I, I like it, but it's up to you. I don't like to overwork the dough, so I'm trying to be kind of careful with it, not to overwork it. I put my thing down the bed and my rice up. That came to my head, I don't know why. I almost forgot the butter, darling. This is one tablespoon cut into pieces. So just pats of butter all throughout the top. Drop it like it's hot. This is stuff that goes through my head as I'm like doing anything, really. And you can taste your pie filling. That's the best part about not doing a recipe that involves eggs. You can always taste it and see if it's sweet enough or if it's too sweet, and then you can adjust it. Just something to think about as you're making your pies this year, this holiday season. And I do have a lattice cutter. It like cuts out the dough in like this perfect lattice diamond. So if all else fails, I'll definitely be using that. I don't want it to be a struggle pie. Okay. I didn't grab a knife, but I did grab a spatula. Don't ask me why. I'm going to use the width of this to measure my thickness, just because it's easy right now. Okay, let's see what we're looking like. <laughs> Okay, fingers crossed, you guys. Can we reach across? Can we do it? It's gonna be a big lettuce, I'll tell you that right now. Oh, snaps, oh snaps, okay. I will use that cutter in a heartbeat. Just, just let this not work, hold on. So I'll make three more strips. Usually it would be every other one, but you can really get creative with pie design. And then pull the outer two down and there and then this back I don't like it I don't like the pattern all right <laughs> so we shall do it the old school way the traditional way Usually I would just tuck the crust under itself, but here, because there's really not much overlay, I'm just going to push it in a little bit. Uh, so you could just crimp the edges with a fork. I'm trying to stick to my favorite little pleated thing. 
I'll really push the beans out of that one. I wanted to press these down, the seams down, into the rim of the crust. I'm so used to working with fondant. It's like I'm expecting to have some pushback from the dough, but I don't. Yum, yum. This is one thing that I definitely grew up having, especially at Christmas time. We always had a blueberry pie at Christmas. Egg and heavy cream for my egg wash. You want to get everything nice and washed. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Hey Nistas, it is the next day. I froze my pie overnight, put my sugar on, my sanding sugar. I cooked this pie for a total of 50 minutes and I made sure halfway through to put foil on the pie. You guys, we have blueberry pie. When I say blueberry pie, oh, oh, do I mean it? Ow, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. Feast your eyes. My secret for cutting a pie perfectly is to freeze the entire pie overnight. Then you can take it out, use a chef knife, cut it in half, quarters, and then in eighths. Then you get perfect slices. That is my little restaurant industry trick. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like these videos with no music in the comments down below. Couture in a blueberry pie. Bye guys.